In this video, we're going to show you how you can take your Star Wars Fantasy Flight game system role-playing game character and bring it into Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Next on How to RPG. For this tutorial to work, you're going to need three things. You're going to need Foundry Virtual Tabletop License, and you're going to need the Star Wars Fantasy Flight Games game system installed into Foundry. Other things that are going to be required and to, to make this happen is you're going to need a lot of data. Um, data that you can find out on the internet. This is not to show you how to import that, but in order for this to function properly, you're going to need all the information on talents, species, careers, specializations, gear to include items, armor, weapons, just to name a few. If you do not have all that data installed within your system, this isn't going to apply to you. Nonetheless, if you do, it's certainly going to make your life a whole lot easier. All right, so let's get to it, shall we? First thing we're going to do, and for this purpose, I'm going to actually take a pre-generated PC that I found out on the internet and bring that in as a pre-gen character for my players to be able to use. So the first thing we're going to do is going to create an actor. Go ahead on the right-hand side. Under actors. And then create actor. We're going to give this actor the name of L-E-L-S-K. Lelsk. And we're going to put this under the pregens folder. We're going to hit create new actor and a blank character sheet is going to appear. So you could actually transfer a character in here or if you have access to this and you're creating a character then you can easily go through the rule book step by step and then fill in the blanks as we go. Some of this may mimic some of that new character generation. Then since we have the character sheet up, then what we're going to do is go to our items tab. And here you will see some folders for character generation and items that I've added. And underneath those folders are certain subdirectories, Species, talents, armor, gear, weapons. So the easiest thing to do is when you fill in this character sheet, the first thing that you're going to want to do is I usually start at the top and work, work my way down, and then I work across the tabs. And I'll show you that in just a second. So we have our name, Lelsk Species. We're going to have her be a Bothan. So rather than go to the species subdirectory and search through all the species, the search function within Foundry Virtual Tabletop is pretty good. So we're going to go just start typing in Bothan and hit enter. The Bothan species comes up. It's important to note that Bothan is under the subdirectory species. As we get into equipment and gear, we may have things that fall under items or weapons and it's important to put those where they are supposed to be so that the auto calculations of the character sheet can take place properly. So we'll take Bothan and we'll simply drag and drop to the species field and then you can see it appears as almost like a removable tag. And when we do that it dynamically updates the character sheet taking the things that a Bothan has for skills and characteristics and auto populates those. The next thing we're going to do is search for the career. In this case, our Bothan is going to be a spy. Again, spy under careers, drag and drop under career. And then we'll look up the specialization, which in this case is infiltrator. Inf Infiltrator. As you can see, it comes up with gear, infiltration droid, and then specialization infiltrator. We obviously want the specialization. We drag and drop that over to the specialization field. 
and put that in there. Next, we'll go down to the characteristics piece. Brawn is going to be three. Agility is going to be two. Intellect two. Cunning is going to be three. Willpower is going to be three. And presence going to be two. Again, by adjusting these, we'll also adjust the skills that rely upon those um, characteristics down in the skill list. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the skills in the skill ranks. If it is a class skill, you want to hit the checkbox. Otherwise, you want to go down your list and input the skill ranks that you have for your character. In this case, we have coercion. We have one skill rank. And as we tab off of that, you can see how that the die changes or upgrades one of the dice. So in this case, it was three green and now is a yellow and two green. The next one is cool. That's one. Deception. We have two skill ranks. Skullduggery. We have one. Stealth. One. And Streetwise. One. Combat skills, we have one in melee. And that'll complete the skills for Lelsk. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and input the weapons and equipment. So as you can see on the character sheet, we have characters, which is highlighted here in the upper middle. Then it has gear and equipment, talents, and biography. So we'll go to gear and equipment. How you put this in isn't necessarily important as far as sequence. It all will dynamically take certain things from certain areas of the character sheet and adjust um, different skills appropriately. So in this case, she is going to be armed with a vibro knife. Simply type in vibro. And we'll see vibro, stealth vibro knife, vibro knife, and vibro knucklers. So, and it's they are all under weapons. So we'll take the vibro vibro knife, drag it over to weapon, and drop. Now it's very important in order to make the die rolls correct. It's important to actually equip your character with this particular item if they're going to be using it. So if vibro knife is kind of Lusk's primary weapon, we're gonna definitely want to check this equipped icon right here where it's black by equipping her and then when we do melee attacks it will take the characteristics of vibro knife and make sure that those are accounted for if it is not then it won't account for those traits and qualities so if you have multiple weapons make sure the right one is equipped when you're making your rolls the next thing we're going to add is stun grenade that under weapon and in this case Lelsk has three so what we'll do is we'll just there is no quantity listed so what we'll do is just drag three stun grenades on here and then as they're used you as the player character can simply delete them or if you'd like to edit the item you could put that here Other gear that we're going to equip her with include stim packs. Put that under gear. And she has two stim packs. So we're going to up it. And as you can see, if you click on the item, it'll extend it and tell you more about the details. Same with the weapons. Comlink, 
Can't be in Star Wars without a com link. In this case, she has a handheld one. Wearing heavy clothing, which gives you an additional soak. So as we add this, you'll want to look at the soak value. So we're going to put this under armor. See, this is also something to be aware of. It's under armor. It's not a piece of gear. So when you make sure, drag it to armor. The soak value hasn't changed, but now watch when I click equipped. It went up to four. Next thing we'll put on Lelsk is scanner goggles. Notice scanner goggles is gear and not an armor or something that they would wear or be equipped with. So it's something that they have, but the equip option is not there to enable. So this is something you need to know as a player character. What do they do? What, they, what do they allow the character to do? Is it their mechanic or is it more fluff um, or description? If it's mechanically based then they're going to want to know whether to add a particular setback die or boost die. Or potentially lowers the difficulty. And then the last thing that we're going to put is credits, which are located under gear and equipment tab. And it looks like she has 50 credits. One thing we finally have to add are talents. Lelsk has the dodge talent, and as soon as I type that, you can see it being under talents. We'll drag and drop that, and again, you can extend it. But as we do that, some of these talents will actually put dice next to some of the characteristic uh, under skills and the characteristics. So if the talent provides a boost die, then what will happen, for example, is if you see discipline and the talent provides a boost die, there will be a blue boost die that is implemented here. Going back to talents. Frenzied attack. And last is convincing demeanor. Convincing demeanor will remove one setback die per rank of convincing demeanor from any deception or skullduggery checks. So, let's see if we go over there to deception. You'll notice it has put the black die with a red line through it. So when somebody goes to use deception, they should know by this visual indicator that they can subtract one setback die. If you go to talents, and increase the rank by edit rank 2 and if they if you close it it will save it and then you can see that it's rank 2 then go over to characteristics it will give two black dice so removing two setback dice i'm going to put it back to one again And it goes back to one. I'm going to verify that these are all correct. It looks like that is the case compared to my pre-gen. If for some reason you've generated your own character and as you convert it over, if something doesn't align up, bring it up to your game master's attention uh, to see what might have gone wrong or not been accounted for. You can see that I have 11 wounds as a threshold, 13 strain, 4 soak. I do not have a defense rating because I do not wear any armor. And then what we could do is put in the biography. This is where you'll fill in your XP, your obligation, duty, morality, and conflict, and then any notes. If you want to add notes, you click on this little edit button here that displays, and it'll give you a small, tiny, mini editor 
that allows you to futz with markup. And you can copy your information here. If you do paste, I should say paste it into this field. If you do paste it and it looks wonky for some reason because you're copying it from a different source, what you can simply do is highlight the text, hit this T with an underscore and an X, and it will rem remove the formatting. And then you can either change it within using some of these tools or you can simply save it. If we do save this text, You'll notice there is no save or submit button. You'll want to hit this downward arrow onto this drive looking icon. If you hover over it, it'll say save. Do that and you can see the text appear there. We're going to go ahead and remove it. It goes from grayed out to dark. We'll go ahead and hit save. Now we're almost done. The only thing we have left to do is to change the the icon or the avatar of Lelsk. In order to do that, you just click on, as you might have seen, the avatar area. Now, depending on where you're saving your information, I'm happy to save this under Amazon S3 under my Star Wars directory. And then I'm going to choose a file. I have some tokens already squared away. And I'm going to select Bothan Woman Scoundrel token. I'll hit open. I say uploaded it to this directory. I'll select file. And it will put it in there as their avatar. Now if I drag from the character sheet onto the play area within Foundry Virtual Tabletop, then that avatar will be placed as a token. And we're done. That's all it takes. All right, to wrap this up, essentially what you're doing is going into Foundry Virtual Tabletop, going into the particular game, creating an actor, launching that actor's character sheet, and then filling in the blanks that take text fields like your skills and character characteristics. And then you're essentially searching through the items for the things that you need like talents, gear, things of that nature, and then dragging those onto your character sheet. That's about it. Saving it, uploading an avatar, and then you're ready to go. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, do me a favor, smash the like button or hit subscribe for future videos. Happy gaming.